the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, that was, yeah. You were you were around when Pryor was in his heyday. Oh yeah. That must have been something. Oh yeah, we uh So you were you were just kinda that was in in seventy four when you were just getting there. Prior, that was he was in he the was peak. A, he was already uh, he was in the peak, right? Big time. Oh yeah, he yeah. was big time. And um, what was that like? It was he would, uh, you know, when I was around the comedy store, I was basically the host of the comedy store. When I MC, you know, and I go to the door if they have a problem, I go to the door and settle the problem and all this stuff. Just Mitzi one, she knew I I do all this stuff in it, and it wasn't no fighting and I'm just being polite and stuff. And Richard would come in. I look at the back of Richard Pryor's in the back. I said, what the hell are you doing here, Richard? How are you doing? He knew Paul Mooney. Mooney was, in, and David Banks, all these. Anytime you got all these guys at the comedy store, Richard wanted to do another album. So what happened is um, Richard, first time I, I, I saw Richard in the back, I said, Richard, how you doing? Spoon, I just come by to see how you doing. I said, fine, I'm doing Richard. He never come by to see how I'm doing. He's just saying this to to uh, set it up for he wanted to work on his act for a new album. Um, so I said, Richard, everything fine? You want a drink? No, no, Spoon. I'll be fine. You want to go on stage? No, no, no. I'll just come by and see how you doing. I said, oh, good. Well, how you doing? How you doing, Richard? Blah, 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 blah. So I would go. I know to go away and come back. And uh, I said, Richard, well, anything you want to drink? Then he want to drink now. See, he want to drink. He'd get a, some of the red drink he liked with uh, olive, what do you call that, cherry in it. Mm. He liked that kind of stuff. And um, so I know to go away. I go away. They told me, Richard going to drive you crazy. <laughs> Richard come by. Richard going to drive you crazy. So I, I go away, come back. Richard, everything all fine? You know, anything else you want? He said, want to go on stage? He said, no, Spoon, I don't want to go on stage. I just come in. I say, how you doing, Spoon? He always oh, play with you. Hey, Spoon. How you doing? Be hollering, Spoon, real loud and shit. And so I go away and come back. I said, Richard, do two minutes. Some people said, Richard Pryor came by the comedy store. He said, sure, I'll go up there and do two minutes. He said, when do I go on? I said, you're going on right after this guy get off. You, i put you on right now. And he'd go up there and do two, and a, two hours. <laughs> 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 then he'll send, he'll call, he'll have, have his secretary call me the next day. He said, thanks for helping me get on stage. Helping me get on stage. He, he, he had to be pushed on stage. That's so weird. Yeah, that's amazing, ain't it? But Robin like, Williams, boop. It would just run up there. <laughs> but Richard would do like two hours? Was that a regular thing? Hour and a half. Thing? Hour and a half. Regular thing, huh? Well, his album, you know, he got to yeah. do his whole album. And then he had his writers in the back. Mooney would bet they're writing him, giving, coaching him on stuff to say, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. He had all that. And then he would have uh, three weeks in the original room where he would work every night. He'd come by every night. Wow. It ain't like some comics get, you know, get too high and come, can't come by. He'll be by there every night. And so Mitzi put me on the show with him. So I would open the show and do 45 minutes, and then Rich would come on and do an hour and a half. Mm. And then we moved to the main room. After about three or four, about a month in the original room, then we moved to the main room. That's when, man, it, and people would draw. So Mitzi would make so much money. He would draw so many fucking people. Old holes ain't been out on the street <laughs> a long time <laughs> with, with fur collars, fur coat on, fake, ah. fur, fake fur coat on, mm. pink and yellow and shit. <laughs> <laughs> he would have, in the main room, he would have, oh my God, he had Mick Jagger, uh, uh, what's the name, the boy that, uh, uh, what's his name, Willie Nelson. I had I talked Willie Nelson go up on the stage and sing a song in the original room. Really? Yeah. He, I said, really, you got your, your guitar? Yeah, I got it. I said, could you go up there and sing a song? I love Willie Nelson. He was so good. He's still around, though. He, he said, I'm scared to do that. I'm, I'm nervous. Don't be nervous with these fucking people. <laughs> <laughs> he went up there and sang one of his songs, boy. I, that was, that was, a, that was a, a thrill for me. So then we moved to the main room. But I would... I would Killed every night in, the, in, a, in, a, in an audience like that. I would get a stand ovation because I would do Mathis that I learned from Detroit and Nat King Cole and them. I would do Johnny Mathis at my last bit, and I would do Al Green just before that. Um, and I and and I would. I saw Al Green uh, throw roses out to the ladies one time. I was at, at the, uh, what is it? This theater down here. Anyway, he would throw roses. He hand roses to the ladies. So I, when I was working at the comedy store, and I'm in front of Richard, I would get dandelions and hand in front of the ladies. And some, some lady did exactly what I wanted her to say. She said, Al Green, give us roses. I said, boy, you lucky. These ain't plastic because I ain't got no damn money. <laughs> I go home and watch these so I can give them back to you <laughs> tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> 
And what I did that, and then when then Johnny Matthew, this is just impressions that I added to my act because there are a lot of ladies out there and they love that shit. And I got a, the women threw the roses back at my feet. I said, "Damn, this shit is cool in the motherfucker." And Richard told me, I said, Richard, everybody said, Richard, you should take Spoon on the road with you. You're going on the tour. He said, oh, I love you, Spoon, but you're too funny. I ain't going, I can't have you out there on the road with me. He said, I was too funny for him. Wow. And he took uh, Finest, you know Finest Henderson? Sure. The Finest would do impressions and stuff. He right. did all the impressions. So he took him on the road. He told you you were too funny? Spoon, you're too funny. I love you, but you're too damn funny. You're open for me. I don't want to be where I have to work that damn hard. <laughs> <laughs> the women would throw the roses back at my feet, boy, them dandelions. <laughs> That's hilarious. That was that was a great compliment. But I have the the billboard of the comedy store at Richard Pryor and John Witherspoon. Wow. I had it somewhere in my uh, phone. Yeah, you you. Uh, I think Mom posted it, and then oh yeah, she did. And then I uh, I think I, I repost. I helped you repost it on your. IG story and then the, the comedy store uh, screenshotted it and posted it. Oh, did they? Yeah, they nice. did that. They did that like a month wow. or two ago. Wow. But oh, the day Richard Pratt had his own TV show. You know, he's on NBC at 8 o'clock mm-hmm. and he was so fucking high, boy. Richard, Richard, I knew we weren't going to last. I knew that shit. We only did four shows. We had scheduled 22. Richard was too fucking high. <laughs> 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 and oh man what was he high on cocaine and uh, vodka and stuff you know but I didn't have no money I probably would have got me some if I had some money <laughs> I ain't had no damn money I'm making this little Bruh. $400 $400 that they giving me for this week he said yo y'all ain't making no money but I'm making $250,000 a show I said well, damn man. wow he's making that much see there you that. go look at that Richard Pryor and John Witherspoon. Wow. Man, what, the you the the year. I wish I had the year up there. Probably 77. God, that's amazing. 77. But I know Richard, we used to go to his house every Sunday. Mm. We used to be at his house every Sunday. And and he had um, he had um, a, a barbecue. He had people. He had little. He got a gym, boxing gym where you box. <laughs> Tennis court. Uh, swimming pool. Uh, 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 he had four, about four acres over there. And I remember where was it? Where was it? It's on Parthenia. That house there was for sale recently for about four million. But uh, I don't think people realize that Richard Pryor lived in that. They don't want to do that because he'd be caught on fire over there. Whoa! Remember the time he got caught on fire? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That yeah. was that house. It was in the house there. Fuck! I would love to own that. That's house. in like Northridge or something, Parthenia. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 on Parthenia. We used, when I was doing North Jesus, Hills. It's right down the street, Dolph Hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to go over there every Sunday. Can you imagine owning Richard Pryor's old house. It's kind of cool. Man. Oh, uh, God, I don't want to go in there. Fucking, that spirit might hit me. I <laughs> <laughs> he on fire, gonna run past the swimming pool. You know that he was. Those he cocaine ran. days must have been crazy there. Oh man! And what's amazing about this is so cold, boy. When the stuff got on radio that Richard Pryor is in the hospital in critical condition. He bur- and from burns from a pipe that blew up. Um, his family went there and stole all of his uh, his people that uh, he probably never seen in him seen in years. Jumped over that damn. You had this huge fence and stole all his watches and everything. And all this stuff was taken out, taken out of his house. Then they say he's going to survive. They jump back over the fence and put it back. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> what? They jump back over the fence with his stuff. They put it back. Yeah, they put it back. They, Richard Price, you gonna steal his stuff? You you have been borrowed from him for for twenty years. Now all of a sudden, you are gonna steal his watch? That's crazy. Yeah, it's hard to be. But at the we top. had so much fun over there, and Sammy Davis Jr. would come there every Sunday in a limousine and a tuxedo on. <laughs> we really? Got, we got shorts on, you know, the raggedest shorts you can find. Old T-shirt. Mm. We playing basketball. Sammy coming to high mind, high mind. Sammy, go put some fucking shorts on. You How old was he back then? Sammy? Yeah. Oh, I bet he. We, this was seventy six. So he must have been. Wow, he was young then. Because he died about sixty. He was sixty two, sixty three. Oh really? He must have been in his fifties, forties, and fifties. Tuxedo, huh? Tuxedo and a limousine. God, imagine being the fly and the guy on the wall. <laughs> when Sammy Davis Jr. pulls up in a tuxedo. Oh man! Steps we, out of a limousine. We also yeah, we while saw, they're playing basketball. <laughs> we also fucking uh, we also fucking uh, 
raggedy, stinking. We done play ball <laughs> all day long. Uh, Sammy walks past him. Hi, man. <laughs> Sammy, wrong house, wrong day. Come on, play some ball with us, Sammy. But we, I mean, there he it, is. it was. Look at that. It was. Uh, hey. hey look, at, look how sharp he is. Wow. <laughs> look at the bell bottoms. Oh, yeah. That's the day. That's the day, brother. Wow. Yeah. Richard, that is Richard, crazy. Played, Richard played tennis. Did he? Yeah, he played tennis, yeah, and basketball. We playing ball. Richard, he checking me and grabbing my dick. <laughs> I said, Richard, this ain't no basketball. Boom, I got to check it. I can check it only way I know. <laughs> I said, Richard, back off me, brother. Oh, God. Uh, he was a funny man. 